I believe it is time uh, we went for some complications related to the areas that I have taught and discussed till now. Since these were mostly at the basic levels, so I highlighted the commonalities in different fields. But now we should also talk about the differences. One of them that I have chosen to speak today, one of such differences is the one between post-colonialism and Marxism or mainly between Edward Said and Karl Marx we can say. Now, Marxism, as is known, has been globally known to be the champion of the rights of the oppressed. Edward Said, in his Orientalism, identifies Karl Marx himself as an Orientalist. Now, these two contradictions, and there has been uh, furious reactions, especially from the Marxist camps. Now we have to understand a bit deeper into this. That is, notwithstanding Marxism's claims for universal emancipation for all and other things, Marx was a European. And his analysis of society, culture, etc. was based on his observation of our primary observation of Europe, finally, uh, direct observation. Other societies and all he observed indirectly. Now you may say that we are also observing Europe and others indirectly. However, we are not giving any formulation like Karl Marx. We are just reproducing or rereading what others did. But when you give a kind of global formulation, it is perhaps expected that uh, you have to know both the worlds. Marx had made detailed study about India. Karl Marx in India, there is an article in this regarding this. I know. In fact, there are more than one. However, it seems he failed to understand many of the things related to India or the Orient. It seems, I don't say he failed. And more importantly, the classic Marxist scheme of things of change of societies like this, the first societies were kind of primitive communism they practiced. All those just after cavemen and all, well, that together. So this was a kind of communism. Accumulation came later. Primitive communism, then slave society, then no, feudalism, then capitalism, and then he says there will be communism in the long run. So these are the five stages. For him it is necessary for every society to pass through these stages. Consequently, Marx supported colonization of India also. Uh, Said has categorically dealt with it in his book Orientalism. He says that, the quoting Karl Marx, that Marx believed that colonization of India was necessary colonization by the Europeans of India was necessary to free India from the oriental despots, that is despotic rulers, tyrannous rulers. We do not know whether they exactly were such or not, or to what extent they were such, or can you put all those kinds of rulers from Ashok to Akbar, or say Akbar to Aurangzeb in the same uh, box, that is very difficult to answer. So, so that capitalism should come, it had come, because feudalism has to go, then capitalism will come and then only communism can come. So imperialism or colonialism becomes a necessary a priori in Marxist theory of society. So that leads Marx to justify imperialism or colonialism. That is the main point of contention between Said and Marx in particular and post-colonialism and Marxism in general. Some post-colonialists are decidedly a bit Marxist like Gayatri Spiva. Class is a very important constituent in hard works 
apart from gender there are that's why nuances i said i'll go to complications now elsewhere also said had commented that he finds marxism to be ethically and epistemologically disabling he said that it is a kind of one orthodoxy marxism itself is one orthodoxy to shoot down another so it cannot be a final choice maybe he implies a strategic choice now the problem also comes from the fact that in spite of his dislike for marx and marxisms in general he has liberally used gramsci antonio gramsci in orientalism and in other places who was a staunch leninist who had spoken about gramsci's orient i mean uh, likings for lenin so gramsci's formula of hegemony is used in orientalism so many marxists then have tried to identify said as an undeclared marxist also because of the fact that he was very close to people like Terry Eggleton, and Noam Chomsky, uh, etc., were known as, you know, or even Frederick James Jameson, the leading faces of New Left in the USA, and I mean both sides of the Atlantic. But anyway, Syed himself had has repudiated these things. That is why, you know, we let us come to a bit more conceptual understanding now. Historical materialism. it has been a wide uh, it has been a very wide claim that marx is the father of historical materialism historical materialism is to understand history as made by material conditions by human human products etc by nature i mean no supernatural thing so marx was the first to say this categorically that's why if you google wikipedia historical materialism you will find it starts with marx however said made the same point throughout he was a secular critic but without reference to marx the person that he chose is giambattista vico you know an italian philosopher of earlier times who also had repeatedly said that human history has to be understood in the in terms of humans that is rational terms secular terms not with reference to supernatural agencies you know whether natural supernaturalism is a, if i may say so or kind of divine supernaturalism so even to express the imperatives of secularism said has consciously avoided referring to marx who is generally known as the father of historical materialism he posits giambattista vico this is a very important poet i don't think any other has pointed this out i mean this is the later point vico is the origin of um, historical materialism i mean he has not categorically used it in this way that vico is the origin of historical materialism but nonetheless he meant the same thing so i think now you have understood that there are differences in spite of similarities there are marked differences between marxism or marxism so we can say and post colonialism to brief re recapitulation marxist theory of society based on european observations generalizes the same kind of condition for the entire globe to which he was not an insider and all the and to add to it very dangerously he supported colonization or imperialism in india as a necessary precursor to the establishment of communism in the final run i do not know how indian marxists respond to uh, i mean respond to this from their party lines but in the, along the critical lines it has Uh, much disturbed a uh, very prominent marxist thinker ijaz ahmed who in a book called in theory has tried to 
sort of recover marks from the attacks of Saeed, but the damage was done. Now, of course, from the Arab Marxist world also, Saeed has been has been critiqued for his unsympathetic or this kind of stance against Marxism, which they think will weaken further the kind of global rule of the proletariat. Anyway, but also try to understand, of course I have said this, but I repeat that Said's rejection of Marxism is very different from the new right kind of rejection of Marxism. You know, it is a predominantly well-read, uh, well-understood and intellectual rejection. At the same time, it has its, its ambiguities, that is the Gramsci case. You know, Orientalism being based to a great extent on Gramsci. So, we will come with further complications later. Thank you very much.